Köszöntöm az országváltó nézőit! Indonézia a legek országa. Itt található a világ legnagyobb szigetcsoportja maga 17 ezer szigetével, a világ legtöbb vulkánja és a világ legnagyobb buddhista temploma is. Azt, hogy ezen kívül mit teszi még izgalmassá és vonzóvá ezt a nagyon különleges vidéket, mai indonéz vendégünk Dodik meséli el nekünk. Hi Dodik! Hello! Is that a real uh, traditional Indonesian outfit on you? Yes, this is batik. Uh, this is uh, our proud clothing of our nation. And the word batik is actually come from the, uh, the word of ba and tik. Ba means uh, ombo from the Japanese word of ombo. Ombo means large. And then tik from the word of titik. It means dots. So this is literally means big dots. And this is, uh, but they are using some creativity uh, methods. So this is the result of our, the, their creativity. And then this is also recognized as in the UNESCO in 2009 as the uh, international heritage uh, of humankind. You are studying law. Yes. You are a PhD student mm -hmm. here at the University of mm -hmm. Debrecen. Mm -hmm. How much Hungarian can you speak? Can you introduce yourself in mm -hmm. Hungarian? Yes, yes. I can speak a uh, basic conversation in Hungarian language. Maybe I will try to introduce myself in Hungarian. Can I? Yeah, sure. Okay. Dodi Vagyok, Indonesia Bo, PhD Halgato, Alamesh Yokto Dumanyikar, Debrecen Egyetemen Tanulok, Orutlok Hot It Lehetek. That's perfect. Thank you. Which which is uh, easier? What do you think, Hungarian or Indonesian, and why? Mm, for me, I think Hungarian is a bit difficult because it's totally different with English, with my own native language. But I need some time to learn because, um, as I know, as far as I know, that Hungarian language, Magyar language, has a very rich of tenses, have very rich of terminologies. So I think it needs more time. To study Hungarian. But Indonesian has many dialects. How many dialects do they have? How many do you speak? Yeah, besides Indonesia as, also, uh, as our native language, we also have more than 300 uh, dialects, um, local dialects. Most regions have their own dialects. But I, I understand that these dialects is different each other. But uh, for example, I live in Yogyakarta. I speak Japanese. Like in Japanese language, we have a different type and hierarchy of, uh, of the way of our speaking. Like for example, if I talk with my, my friend, I'm using Chromo, Chromo language. So I'm speaking with you without just like easy conversation. But if I speak with the oldest people or maybe with, the, with, the, with the, uh, my professor, for example, I use the Chromo Hingil. So this is the most politeness language. So there are some hierarchy in our one, only one dialect, but there are more than 300 dialects, you can imagine. But I cannot understand the other dialects. I cannot speak with it, but I can understand a little bit if they speak with their own dialect, because there are some similarities, there are some also differences, but I can understand the point of the discussion. How many religions are there? And what is, what is the Indonesian law uh, says about religion to the people? Yeah, uh, actually we have uh, our government recognize five religions. Maybe now it's more than five religions, like for example, Buddhism and then um, Islam and then Hinduism and then Christian and Catholics. And now we have Konghutu and other beliefs. But the most essence of our government, why they regulate these reg religions, um, official religions in, for our country, because uh, we want our society have more morality, more close to the God, so they have uh, some kind of uh, guidance of life. This guidance is, for example, the Pancasila, yes, if I pronounce yes, it yes, well. Yes. What does that mean? What this does it is, contain? Uh, Pancasila uh, is the basic foundations of the nation, and it contains five principles of Pancasila. The first principle is believe in God. So we do not recognize atheism. We encourage every citizens to believe in God. So that's why we recognize for more than five religions officially in our country. The second is humanity. So we believe that um, actions against with humanity is, not, uh, is against our, the morality of the humankind. Third is unity. 
So Pancasila and uh, and the government try to unite us because as you understand, we have more than 300 dialects. We are at more than 500 ethnic groups. So how to unite us is using Pancasila. And then the fourth is democracy. Democracy, and you, I will to tell you, I, I want to tell you that Indonesia is the third largest democracy, democratic countries in the world because we are having more populations. So we have also general elections in every five years. So we also practicing democracy very well. And the last is social justice. So we believe that building the court, building the justice among the citizens, the, the, the prosperity of the citizens will be very great and very good in the future. I saw an interview with the Hungarian ambassador once mm -hmm. and she was talking about the cooperation possibilities yes. between Hungary and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned some areas like IT, like solar mm -hmm. energy, water management. Mm -hmm. How could I imagine this? How could you imagine mm -hmm. this? Like, for example, engineers going to Indonesia from Hungary? Yeah, uh, I do not uh, specifically understand about the, the, the whole agreements um, last time, but uh, we do really hope that there will be more and more investment or maybe uh, 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 expertise, experience from the, from the other countries to come to our country. And like, for example, uh, you mentioned about the engineers from, engineers from Hungarians that would be great for our country because we are rural. We are having rural areas. We are having a lot of population, and the government try to make a better public transportation. So maybe Hungary can teach us about how to manage or maybe how to build such kind of uh, a most advanced technology in public transportation. So our citizen could use the public transportation and. Uh, and we can get some more advantages from the Hungarian experience. And maybe other, uh, other thing that I, I should mention is about the, the cooperation itself is not in the side of Hungarian to Indonesia, but also in the side of Indonesia to Hungarians. Maybe in future there will be more Indonesian tourists to come to Hungary, or maybe Indonesian investment to come to Hungary, or maybe Indonesian students to come to Hungary because so far as far as I know there are only limited number of Hung Indonesian study in Hungary but in future uh, the ambassador of you, you uh, his uh, her excellencies uh, you did Nemeth stated that uh, this year they will invite more than 50 students from Indonesia to come to study in Hungary and feel the experience of the Central and Eastern European. What is this experience is like for you? What was it like for the first time? Was there anything that shocked you or surprised you when you came here to Hungary? Of course, I feel totally different between my country and European one. But uh, I have a feeling that Hungarian has, a, I, 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 I have experience with the different feelings, different experience with the other Western countries. Like when I study in Hungary, uh, people, my friends, my Hungarian friends are very helpful. They have hospitality. The most important thing is you have very nice food. Very nice food? Yeah, cuisine. Hungarian cuisine is very nice. But, but Indonesian cuisine is very nice too. Can you compare the two a little bit? Yes. Are there any food which is present also in Hungary and also in Indonesia? Yeah. Uh, Actually, there are some similarities, like for example, goulash. You have goulash. Yeah, you have goulash. But in Indonesia, we call it as gule. Yeah, it's 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 a bit same, but uh, with the different some uh, different materials and also spices. But as far as I taste the both uh, goulash and gule, I think it's same. Using meat, fat meat, and then it's rich of taste. And but we don't uh, we don't use paprika. We use other spices. Once I saw a list of Indonesian food that Indonesian people couldn't live without. What are these? What, what is for you a specific thing that you really miss here from Indonesia? Yeah, I really miss like some food. Yeah, there are, you know, Indonesian has a very colorful cuisines. And like, for example, if you are 
vegetarian. Indonesian also have another version of salad like gado gado or Japanese salad. It's like a fresh and hygienic veget vegetables with mixed with uh, some peanuts creams, nuts creams and other things. And if you are non-vegetarian, you have a lot of options like satay uh, or maybe uh, soto or bakso is from meat and other things. So for me, but I have to taste the European one like uh, the goulash or maybe pork roll. Yeah, but for me, it's good to, 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 to come here and taste other food. I had a strange experience in Athens, in Greece, mm -hmm. that there were orange trees growing mm -hmm. all over the city, mm -hmm. but you were not allowed to eat the orange from the tree. Mm -hmm. How about bananas in Indonesia? Yeah, we, yeah, we have a lot of types of banana in Indonesia. And like, for example, uh, we have the smaller one, smaller banana, we call it as gedang mas, and the bigger one, the bigger one is, the name is, uh, Pisang Ambon, Gedang Ambon. So, uh, uh, but you can find the bananas every banana trees everywhere. And can you eat them yes, on the streets yes, too? You can pick, but you you but you you cannot come to the territory of uh, somebody's home. But you have to ask. But if you are a foreigner, ask to taste the banana in their home, you can get a free banana. There are so many volcanoes all around yeah. the city. What happens if, if a volcano is active? Indonesia is the location of the ring of fire. So there are more volcanoes, active volcanoes in surrounding the Indonesian territory. And uh, like for example, in my hometown, there, are, there is one uh, active volcanoes. The name is Marapi Mountain. And this Marapi Mountain is a very active and it was erupted the last one is in 2013 and there are some victims of this uh, eruption and but uh, as I mentioned to you if you go there just check whether this volcano is active or not and then try to uh, looking for some information uh, if the government published some warnings or maybe announcement about these uh, areas. Are there any rules to be kept uh, when an earthquake happens? There are so many er earthquakes around Indonesia. Have yeah. you experienced one? Yeah, for example, like uh, some rules, uh, like for example, you cannot go surrounding some ring area. So you cannot come close to the area, the active mountains. But um, uh, usually the government uh, do some kind of uh, preventive uh, action so some of the society living surrounding the mountain they have to move out to the region or maybe they have to go to some some dedicated places for for their safety and security and also for their health and during the eruption you can um, uh, maybe if you are the citizens there you have to uh, stay at home just to watch until the government publishes uh, the safe status of this mountain. Yeah, there are rules not only for earthquakes, but also for animals. Yeah. Can you tell me more about the monkeys, for example, mm -hmm. and also about the Komodo dragon? Yeah, Why yeah. are both animals that are a little or a lot dangerous? Yeah. They are not dangerous, actually, as we know that animals are not dangerous. But, uh, but we have to be aware that they are specific animals they have their own specific creators. So for example, if you, if you visit the Komodo Island, we have Komodo Island dedicated for the life of the Komodo there. So you have to, at least one of two locals accompanied you during your visit in Komodo Island, just to make you safe. Because they are understand how the Komodo life, maybe if the Komodo is very hungry and then you come there, it will be dangerous for you. Or maybe if you, go to the forest just like what I mentioned before just keep all your belongings in your pack because monkey is very cute animal but they have some certain behavior that they can easily take everything like your earrings maybe your glasses or maybe other things so you have to be careful if the monkey take one of your belonging they run away you cannot search this monkey right but I always, uh, as the Western European, there are some experience that maybe you can meet gecko. 
Gecko in our country, um, uh, the name is Cicak. Cicak, uh, small animals. Uh, we call it in English Gecko. And this Gecko has an interesting sound in the night. Maybe European will feel like a, a nasty thing about this animal in the night. And then, uh, but this animal is very nice. Uh, they eat actually the mosquitoes. So they are safe actually. There are some special Indonesian traditions mm -hmm. which tourists or people who visit Indonesia should be probably aware of. Mm -hmm. One of them is called pingit, if I pronounce yeah. it well. What is pingitan. it? Pingit or pingitan. Yeah, this is like a special um, um, custom in before marriage in Japanese tradition that the bride and the groom, it should be uh, not meet each other for specific days, usually one month or maybe one week before marriage. The, the, only, the only purpose why we have this kind of pingitan because uh, in our custom, there should be no date before marriage. So they have to be far away. They, have, they can contact each other. They can, they can communicate each other. But the most important thing is why we keep them in their homes and then they cannot meet each other before the marriage because of uh, we, they should have uh, some kind of curiosity of marriage. So like for example, maybe the bride will have some kind of uh, beauty treatment during the, the whole ping it days and then maybe the, the groom maybe also have the, 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 the same one. And when they have marriage or maybe when when they come and meet each other during the wedding they will surprise each other because they will see their mate more handsome or maybe more beautiful so they will be surprised each other did you go through some kind of a beauty treatment before your yes wedding? yes when i what was it yes like? yes i have the experience before that i didn't meet my wife for one week and i really surprised that my wife feels so yeah she's beautiful but at that time, I feel that, is that my wife? Because she looks very, very beautiful at that time during the wedding. And what is the Indonesian dance look like? What are the rules for this dance? Yeah, I know one of traditional dance in Indonesia. The name is Bedoyo, Bedoyo dance. Bedoyo dance is the sacred traditional dancing in Yogyakarta. And this is only specific uh, dancing that in association with the royal family of the king. And then uh, only limited persons can be invited to see this dance. And also uh, uh, the dancers, it should be the relatives of the king, uh, of the royal family. And there are nine dancers in the, like for example, in Bedoyos among, there are nine dancers. They are dancing in front of the king and for the families, relatives, and also for the, uh, in, uh, for the participants invited by the king. But, uh, uh, but this, this dance has uh, created, uh, this dance actually created by Hamengku uh, Buono One. So this is very traditional dance and for the royal, royal family. What would you recommend uh, to visit in Indonesia? Uh, for example, if you come to my hometown, we have a Borobudur temple. This is the international heritage site. And it was uh, the seven world wonder. And then uh, Borobudur is the largest uh, Buddhist temple in the world. It built in 9th century. And uh, during the Buddhism uh, celebration um, uh, of the, these beliefs, they celebrated in in my hometown in this surrounding the temple so and also we have prambanan temple in my hometown this prambanan temple has a long of uh, long history if you if you ever heard about the story love story of rama and sinta why they meet each other the love story between them there is a specific dance there in front of the temple so it's it's wonderful it's amazing so uh, you can see the Ramayana dancing between Rama and Sinta, how they meet, how they love each other with actually with the, with the, with the dancing. And there are a lot of uh, specific places. Like for example, if you go to Bali, um, you know, Bali is uh, more, they, they have a Hinduism temple. And 
uh, but interestingly Indonesian is the most um, uh, the biggest Muslim population but we have uh, Hinduism temple also in Bali and if you want to see how they celebrate their beliefs and then if you are if, if, maybe not only for the Hinduism celebration if you want to see how the city looks like and then how the beach how the beauty the beach and then uh, if you want to do some diving in the sea come to Bali so you have a lot of options I already feel like going there thank yeah, you yeah. very much for coming to us thank you a nézőknek is köszönjük a figyelmet, tartsanak velünk legközelebb is. Viszontlátásra!